Hey y'all, Coach and Fight. Hey guys, Stacy with Hello. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about healing. Healing. I like healing. Yeah, we promised to do a class on healing yesterday when we did our class on prayer. We thought it necessary to uh, talk about prayer before we talk about healing. So if you haven't had a chance to uh, watch that video, you're going to have to watch it after this one, you know, so you can actually learn how to do this healing. But today's class, we're going to touch on um, the third testament and what it says about how we're all to heal, who is supposed to be doing this healing, why we are supposed to be doing this healing, anything else we can come up with. Mm -hmm. But you know, Stacy says she has something to do, so we're gonna let her be the timekeeper. She going she's giving me a dirty look, but you're gonna be in charge of keeping us on track, maybe moving us along. We have a lot of verses to cover here, but we're gonna let Stacy be in charge of moving the class along and we'll move as swift, swiftly as we possibly can. Well, we don't want to move it too swiftly that we're not able to express what we need to express, but do we do want to not start rambling. I understand, not start rambling. <laughs> All right, speaking of not start rambling, we'll go ahead and get started. We're over here in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 through 8. If you would, read verse 7, say. 7. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So what is this talking about? Um, it's just saying when you go out to minister to people, uh, and not even minister, but to just lo let them know that the kingdom is here. Yeah, this is our Father. This is the Messiah telling us, giving us specific instruction on, you know, how and what it is we're supposed to teach or preach when we go out to uh, minister people. And the first thing you'll find out even in other books that it was the kingdom of heaven is at hand was the main message. Mm -hmm. What this is talking about is how the spiritual valley has descended upon man. But we'll get into, I guess, what you'll call rambling if we talk about that. So we'll save it for another video. In the meantime, stage read verse 8. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Now, this is what we want to talk about here because here is the Messiah giving us specific instruction to heal the sick. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, and this is like a direct order. If we was in the military, would you be able to disobey this command? No, not without um, punishment. Yeah, you're at least going to get an Article 15 even for even thinking about it, right? Mm -hmm. And so you heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. Right. Um, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely ye give. And it goes, you know, in other places it talks about the money aspect. But here we're focusing primarily on this heal the sick part. Yeah, one of the things I want to say, and I don't want to um, ramble, but I do want to say that a lot of times we hear only emphasis is put on cast out devils. Yeah. And I think that that's just because you can't see it. Can't see the you devil. can't see you can see if you try to heal somebody and they don't get healed oh uh, try to you know you try to cleanse a leper and they don't receive their cleansing yeah. and e and even raising the dead yeah, but you know if that you, dead person got up or not right but if you go and say cast out you know devils you can't really say, well, you can say that person can leave there and say, I cast it out, but maybe you received them back. Yeah, you went back like and that. got to pick them back up back there, Joe, so, you know. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. So let's go on here. Let's go on to the next verse we'll look at. And this is in James. Okay, that was the command. Here goes some instruction. If you would read uh, James chapter 5, verse 14. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Okay, now here is the instruction for how to heal out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I've done this. I mm -hmm. wanted to give my testimony here and see if I can do it really quickly. Um, when I first really understood this verse, it was because I was in need of healing. And because I didn't have these so-called elders that you know, were around me, I decided to go to the local church and ask them to heal me. Mm -hmm. I actually had to give them a class on this verse right here first, you know, bring it back to their attention so they'll know what to do. And they actually performed or did what's, what's talked about in these verses. And I believe I received the healing. Okay. I believe that's important for a number of reasons, but let's go on to verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Him. Now, this is important right here because it's talking about how the sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come back later on when we make the connection between illnesses and sin. Right. But it's important to understand how the process of healing works is when you're actually praying for that individual, you are somehow forgiving them of their sins. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what the Messiah was doing, right? 
Yeah, you know, you, you want to say, well, how does having faith and um, saving saving the sick and raising him up, you know, what does that have to do with sin? How does healing, um, how is it relevant to sin? But it's very relevant. We'll see that a little later. Well, matter of fact, let's jump over there now. Um, we're going to come to uh, chapter 43 of the third testament of the Bible. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but we've talked about it twice, how sin and illnesses are related. Mm -hmm. If you would, read verse 1. It says, when man deviates from the path of righteousness through lack of prayer and good habits, he loses his moral fortitude and his spirituality and is exposed to temptation. In this weakness, he gives space to sin, and that sickens the heart. When man deviates from the path of righteousness. So what does that mean? Um, when he turns. When he turns from the mm -hmm. path of righteousness. So he, he's no longer doing what? He's no longer abiding by the um, the orders, the commands of the Father. Yeah, but that's what righteousness is, right? Mm -hmm. Obeying and keeping the, the covenant and the laws of the scripture. He's deviated from that through lack of prayer and habits. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's because of his lack of his prayer that this has happened mm -hmm. or his bad habits. Mm -hmm. It says he loses his moral fortitude. So what does that mean? Um. It's like, well, fortitude means strength. Okay. So he loses, uh, I guess, that mor morality, those virtues that hold him together. Yeah, he, okay. He, it starts to break down. Yeah, so he's not really, you know, morally astute as he used to be or right. something like mm -hmm. that. It says, and his uh, spirituality. Yeah. So he loses his spirituality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's an important, that's an important connection here mm -hmm. um, between our spirituality and this so-called righteousness. Right. And is exposed to temptation. Yeah. So once this all happens, now he's tempted. Mm -hmm. So, well, and you can think of some of the temptations that will come into your life. Yeah. It may be things that, you know, you've tried to do away with or particular foods or people or actions or do whatever. Yeah. You land on the couch and not being active enough would be a temptation. Mm -hmm. It says, and his weakness has give space to sin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now he's, he's, he, he's given into this temptation. Yeah. And it says, and that sickens the heart. Yeah. And then you can read another text, other books, where once your heart gets sick, it starts to travel to that sickness travels to other parts of the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the origin of illness is what? The origin of illness is sin. Sin. All right. Now, I know we're a little bit out of order here, but let's come back to the Gospels and let's look at Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Okay, 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So here it is, and I'm really jumping around here, but here we're talking about um, having the sign of what? Well, these are the signs of them that believe. That those that believe in his name have these particular signs. And it's talking about casting out devils like we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about speaking in tongues. But then look at verse 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Okay. Now, that's what we're talking about in this class because you see there in verse 18, it's talking about these people who believe mm -hmm. shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Right. So, this saying that we all have the ability to heal if we believe. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, we're going to get into some, spe on some specifics on how to do that here, but we remember from Matthew how we was actually commanded to do so. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, before we jump over into the Third Testament of the Bible, I want to take a look over at the Hippocratic Oath. You know what that is? That's that oath that is seen on doctors' walls um, about some kind of oath that they take. Uh, so all of the doctors have taken this oath. Now, these are the people that we have entrusted to our healing, right? Yes. Right? And like you say, so every doctor, as far as I know, every doctor has to have this or, you know, even even... Maybe even the nurses or the nurse practitioners or such, right? Um, I don't know if they have to, but I've seen it on majority of their walls. Well, that'd be interesting. You guys put it in the comment section what you know about that, whether the doctors actually have to have this or is it something that they take on, you know, at their own free will if they have the option. And the reason why I talk about that, you know, is because of what we see here in the very first sentence of this so-called Hippocratic Oath. 
Okay. I would actually read that, but it has some words in there that you can't pronounce. Yeah, a lot of God's names. Yeah, according to the particular verse in the scripture, you're not supposed to pronounce the names of other of false gods. Right. And you, you're never supposed to even let those words come over your lips. But you, you believe you can read it without mentioning their names, or you want me to try it? Mm, I don't know if I can or not. But... Well, let me try it. It says, I swear by the healer. And by all the gods and goddesses, making them my witnesses, that I will carry out according to my ability and judgment this oath and this indenture. I think they're pretty serious about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, they, they say absolutely. They, they they have named these particular gods, and if you click on these names, you would actually see they are gods of healing that you know they have turned to for healing throughout history. Mm. And so here you have the Hippocratic Oath, and these uh, physicians, these doctors, you know, like you said, they've taken this oath. Two other gods. Two other gods. Yeah. So now my question I, I wanted to ask was, do you believe this is the way our Father intended for us to to be healed? I know it's not because just the first two words where it says I swear is he forbids us to swear to anything because he said we can't make one hair white or black. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not saying to to leave your doctor or change your, your medical practices at all. That's what, not what this is about. Our father put these healing medicines here for our healing. And these guys, these professionals, these doctors have studied what it takes to extract these healing properties from these particular um, trees and, and vegetation and then use, the, use those to actually um, create drugs that can heal our body. They, they do have a benefit. They do have a place. Yeah. But my question is, is could this possibly be the way that our father intended for us to be healed? No. No. And like I said, I'm jumping out of place, but I did want to show you guys that. Let's jump over to the third testament of the Bible. Now we're going to come to um, chapter 43. And we're going to look at a particular verse right here. I have to get my notebook to see which one it was. Matter of fact, verse 12. My people, the true healing bosom that is able to heal all illnesses originates from love. Okay, so this is actually our father's source of healing. Mm -hmm. He never really intended for us to have to go to doctors. He talks about healing coming from love. Right. Read verse 13. Love with your spirit, love with your heart, and love with your mind. And you shall have strength enough to heal not only the illnesses of the body, or to give consolation for small human miseries, but will also know how to resolve the spiritual mysteries and the great anguish, confusion, and remorse of the spirit. So this we have, we have all of this healing power already inside of us. Yes. So we were commanded to use it. We were told that believers, this will be the sign if you actually believe you're going to be able to heal people. Mm -hmm. And now we're giving details on how this is actually done. What's the, what's the key element here to it? Love. To love. Right. We're going to find out that as simple as this is, this is how he actually intended for us to heal people. Mm -hmm. Now, this is why we had to do the class yesterday on prayer, because you have to be able to now take that love and channel it through your prayer in order to heal a person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, we're going to find out here that, you know, when the person is suffering from an ailment, you 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 put you concentrate your energy, maybe even putting your hands on an individual or the oil, like James says, and you concentrate your love energy toward that place that is of that is hurting in them, and this through this power here, it actually heals their body. Yeah, I would say that it would be sort of hard to do if you had no connection to that person. Not saying that you can't do it, but when you have no connection to that person, it might be a little harder. Okay, so, so, and I would agree. But I would also add that when we become spiritualized we, and we, we start to get a connection between everything our father has created, right. even our neighbor, even the stranger. Yes. Uh, but, mm -hmm. you know, not the, but go ahead. Anyway, mm -hmm. you, you're right. I, I, I do see your point. Um, it's hard to go up to somebody you don't know and lay your hands on them and start loving on them, you know, especially when you're thinking that they think you're crazy. Yeah, if it, unless that person is very, very sick. You know what I'm saying? There, you see the anguish on them. You see them troubled. You see them in distress. You know that then, they ain't got nothing. They yeah, ain't got they, they, it, you, it, you, you, you're that last hope. They're only hope. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can channel that love 
that your spirit has and you like you said make that connection between your spirit and their spirit and that can happen so I believe. so i believe in all of this and we're gonna move on is that there could be some um what we call it um improvement where you have to some training some mm -hmm. we're actually going to have to learn to do this yeah yeah some okay some growth some growing all right let's go on to verse 14 that bosom resolves the great trials illuminates calm sorrows and melts away the chain of oppression all right call, talking about this healing balm that's inside of us look mm -hmm. at verse 15 men who have been bought to despair by science shall return to health and life with the touch of that bosom, the spirit that has the spirit that has parted shall return to the world of love of the brother who calls. So this is talking about the people who have chronic illnesses. Yeah. People who have been going to doctors all of these many, many years asking these physicians to help them through this love. And I have to add the ability to pray for people. We're now going to have the opportunity for these people to get healed. Mm -hmm. People who have depended on the scientists who have only failed them. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're going to come down here to chapter 60 out of the third testament of the Bible. And we're going to look at verse 95. Okay. I have given great gifts to my chosen ones. One of these is the power of healing, the bosom. So that with that gift you may fulfill a mission that is one of the most beautiful missions among humanity. Since your planet is a vale of tears where there is always pain to be found. So now we're getting into the nitty gritty of this um, video. And I want to apologize again for it being so disjointed and jumping around here. Um, my wife, she's blessed us with her time. And, you know, she um, I basically just need to get on with it. So, you know. Um, I don't want to hold her up, but here we're talking about the divine envoys, and what I mean by that is the forerunners, these people who have the mission of helping humanity through their understanding of the Father, His Scripture, His laws, His calendar, everything like that. They're, these people are the ones who are the forerunners, like I said. They have the responsibility of healing. Mm -hmm. These are the primary people. These are the chosen ones. These are the these are the chosen ones that he's talking about here. But notice how notice why it is that he gave them this gift. He gave them the gift so that they may fulfill a mission that they have been given. They've been they've been given this this mission. Is this is their mission? Um, it, it is their mission to save humanity, what it boils down to, and part of their mission is healing. And what we're finding out here is that this is an extremely important part of the mission. Maybe we won't even find out that it's actually more important than actually teaching. Hmm. Yeah. We won't find out here in okay. a second. Okay. Um, let's go on to verse 96. By means of this gift, you have a vast field in which you so consolation according to my will and I have deposited that bosom in your being among the tenderest of your heart strings of the tenderest of your heart strings so we find it out again that he's put this healing process in our heart and that's why it comes out that's why it's triggered through love mm -hmm. you have enjoyed it before its prodigies you have bowed your hearts have softened when faced with the suffering of men and you have walked always on the path of charity Okay, go on to 97. Continue giving that bosom that is not found in your hands, for it overflows in a look filled with compassion, consolation, and understanding. So this right here, what is he saying? He's saying this balm, this healing power, is not necessarily found in our hands. Right. Even though we're told to lay the hands on the person, there's no power in the hands. Yeah, that's just for their, like we said, with prayer, you know, praying out loud is just for their encouragement. Praying, putting that, put the hands on that person is just for, I believe, for their, like, some kind of evidence for them. Yeah, and it actually could deliver some power, too. And you know how you feel that warmth when somebody touches you? Right. You know, that that actually does something when people touch you. Mm -hmm. But I, but you're right, it's probably just a material thing. Yeah. Because okay. we learn. Huh? No, I was just going to say, yeah, when you feel that warmth, well, it makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah So, but that's a material thing. That's yeah. that's materialistic. Mm -hmm. But the when you actually focus your love on them, mm -hmm. this is what's actually going to do the healing. Yeah. And what does it say? It is, for it overflows in a look filled with compassion. 
So like you was talking about earlier, when you see that person that just ain't got no more hope, that's what kind of comes out. You know what I mean? Especially if you see them, you know, to think that they're about to perish or whatever. It's like, you know, that's a look of compassion, right? Yeah. You know, sometimes you, you, you are praying for someone. I I remember when my grandmother uh, fell sick that time and we went up there to pray for and you, you're crying. You're just feeling, you're feeling, I don't know what you're feeling, but you can see it opposed to, I've been in prayer lines in the church where you're wanting a healing and they act like they don't even want to touch you. Well, it's because they don't know how to heal you and they don't want you to be disappointed, them to be disappointed, you them to be considered, considered false when they go through this act of trying to heal you and then nothing's going to happen. Right. But that's why we're doing this class. That's why we did a class on prayer because we're actually learning how this works. Mm -hmm. So you have this look of compassion, this look of consolation, this understanding of the other person and from it, it's generating this love that's now coming through you and it can come through your hand your hands can actually be a portal mm -hmm. to transport some of this love to the other person yeah. and then you combine that with the prayers for this individual and for the healing of this individual and maybe even adding some oil in the mix here you start out you're starting to see the picture of how people are getting healed right yeah mm -hmm. this, this is how it's supposed to be done mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it's, it's i realize this is a mixed soup of stuff that we kind of you know throwing in this pot here but I think if we, you know, add a little bit of salt or whatever, it actually could go down pretty well. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on. It follows through good thoughts and becomes healthy advice in words of life. So it follows through the good thoughts and becomes healthy advice. Now, how many times have we been there with a person who was doing bad? We might not have even thought we had something to say. And then all of a sudden a thought comes, well, have you tried this? Have you thought about that? You know, I heard this is a good even if I heard tomatoes is good for that or I heard mm -hmm. baking soda is good treatment. Have you tried that? You know, these thought that's what it's talking about when it's saying these good thoughts come and this healthy advice emanates. That's where that's coming from. These are these angelic spirits now who are, are bringing this to your attention so that you can actually help them by giving them this healthy advice. Another thing that goes along with thoughts is also you hear that somebody is sick. And so you can't sit there and have thoughts about, oh, they always sick, ain't nothing wrong with them. And then when you see that person, now all of a sudden you want to pray for them. No, nah, it don't work like that. Yeah. You, you got to have love. All of this stuff is centered around love for that person. So that when you are presented with an opportunity and a blessing, because it is a blessing to pray for others, uh, you have good thoughts for them now. Yeah, yeah, these good thoughts. All right, let's go on to verse 98. The gift of healing has no limits. Never forget that you are saturated with it. All right. So this has no limits whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So we have infinite power to heal. Mm -hmm. So whereas that doctor can't see that lady for six months, you know, we ready. Yeah. We, we, we infinite. Line them up. Yeah. You know what I mean? From here, line them up from here to yonder. We've got to take care of this as soon as we can, as, as powerful as we can. Matter of fact, what we're going to do, right after we heal somebody, we're going to teach them how to heal, and we're going to put them in the line, and they're going to be part of the process. We're going to get this done faster. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If pain makes you a victim, it is because you are subjected to a testing. All right. So now we, we are getting a little bit off track here because now it's actually talking about ourselves yeah it's not necessarily talking about us going out and healing others mm -hmm. it's talking about we being sick mm -hmm. and we've got all this healing power and it said oh heal or heal yourself well if we aren't being healed it's because of what because there's a testing there's, that we are yeah. being subjected to yeah so something is going on we may even be under the angel of punishment you remember mm -hmm. his punishments are temporal right meaning it includes illnesses mm-hmm do not forget my teachings if you cannot remove the pain with that bosom. Forget instead your own sufferings and put your thoughts in others, those for whom the sorrow is greater. So when you're sitting there with your toothache and you can't do nothing about your toothache, stop. I mean, you didn't ask, you know, you, you, you can't heal your, you, that pain right there is giving you merits that you need in order to go on. So stop focusing on that and even get more merits as you focus on somebody else that is in more pain. Yeah, because you've asked with your heart, and you know, a toothache is one of the worst pains there is. And when you've asked the Father sincerely, sometimes with tears, even though, you know, sometimes our tears don't move the Father, but 
when you asked him now and it hasn't happened as as there sometimes it's for a reason yeah you know get up and start doing things and i know that's that's easy to say i've been in pain before um but we have to to get up and start maybe helping others or doing things to earn merits and you know in his own time the father he yeah. de- he definitely will heal you but because he definitely sees what's going on so we we'll concentrate on others all right it says that is when you will see prodigies in yourself and in all your brothers so when we start concentrating on on others mm-hmm. sending this power to others and that's just love loving others yeah All right, we're going to jump down to verse 102. I give you a drop of the bosom so that when you are persecuted, you may perform prodigies of healings among humanity. So healings among humanity. So he's going to give us this balm just so that we can perform miracles. Mm. And it ain't just us. You know, ain't nothing you need. This power is for all believers, right? Right. Mm-hmm. That's what it said, right? Mm-hmm. If you're a believer, you're supposed to be able to heal people. Yeah. For the most part, it's just us knowing how to do this, right? Yeah. So, you know, because we didn't watch television on some, some really freaky ways of, you know, healing people, you know, when they put the hand on your head and push you down to the floor and, you know, stuff but anyway it's, it's saying that the the true believers have this power for the prodigies and healing right for in the great ep- epidemics when illnesses strange and unknown to science arise the powers of my disciples will be manifested uh, you was talking earlier about your grandmother being sick mm-hmm. she she what what was wrong with her well we found out that she had the coronavirus she had the coronavirus now how old was your grandmother my grandmother at that time was 92. 92 years old. Now, so she, so you ran up there and you healed her. You, you prayed for her. Yeah, we prayed for her. Some of us even caught coronavirus praying, praying for her so hard. Mm-hmm. But has what happened to her? Well, she, she's great now. Yeah, you I know, was gonna say, would fine. you? Do you think you can beat her in a race? Oh, I have a hard time. <laughs> yeah. So you, so you can actually add that to, you know. I believe, you know, the number of people that you actually helped heal. And that's what it's talking about, these strange epidemics. Yeah. You know, and this coronavirus is just one. They got others that are on the way. And but we but through this coronavirus, we're understanding that we do have the power to heal people. Yeah. You know, it's kind of I don't know. Pe- people would say that's kind of arrogant for you to say I healed somebody. So, you know, but I'm. You know, it's just the wording. The yeah, way you're it's saying just it. the wording. But you know, the father used our love for that person to reach him, and you know, he does the healing. Yeah. And he used our love for that person. That's why I say, you know, sometimes it's hard. But like you said, when you become spiritualized, everything that the father created becomes, you know, you love and you want to cover and you want to, you know, take care of. But when you have that personal relationship and you love that person, personal relationship and you love that person, I think it just it's just something yeah. that happens like yeah. that. Yeah. All right, we're going to jump down to verse 106. 106. I will give you the command to rise and go to work, for it will be a time of so great and clear signals that you will hear the voice of the spiritual world as well as that of the of this one okay the, this right here again we're jumping around but this is actually giving details of the timing of some of these events right here this is talking about how these forerunners are going to simultaneously get the command to actually go out to heal the world oh okay I was gonna say what does it mean by the command to go to work to go out and start healing <laughs> to go out and start healing this, this we find out here that this event happens this call to worship happens after the day of the Lord mm. after the world has been humbled mm. they're in this position where nobody got no doctors no more mm-hmm. you know ain't nobody got no healing power you know they they depending on you know this and that and other things right. the only result they had the, the the only hope they have is for the father and so now he is now sending his people out the ones who are watching this video and others people you know while learning in other places too people who have this ability to heal people will get this command Man, from the spirit world, it says where you're actually going to hear it from inside, and it's going to be a strong sense of go help, sending you out to actually help to to to, to heal the world, to to heal these people. Mm-hmm. They will be coming to you instead of you trying to 
find them. They'll be finding the the ill the ill people. Yeah. Well, no, I I don't know. It sounds like to me it's the envoys that's actually good, that's going to be on the move. They're okay. the ones that's going to be sent out. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because the sick people can't really. Yeah. Move Some like of these that. people, you know, are going to have to get them rocks up off of them, or you know, may have you know be in bad shape that they can't move. All right. Well, let's let's go on. Marking by events that the hour of your struggle has arrived, I will speak to you spirit to spirit and guide you on the path. So here you're going to have these healers, these people who have the assignment of healing will have spiritual guidance. Mm. This is why it's necessary to keep the law because it is, the, it is through the keeping of this law that allows us to have this spiritual guidance. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why it talks about the angel of the covenant inside the covenant in Exodus chapter 23. Mm -hmm. Yet, before you go to humanity as teachers, you will come as doctors. And when you have quieted their pains, they will be able to drink from the well of pure water of my word. Now, this right here, now it again is talking about the timing and it's telling us... Um, um, but I believe it's, it's telling us here is that before we can actually teach humanity, we're actually going to learn how to heal them. Mm. Now, I, I, this verse jumps out, at to, out to me because I actually tried it. Okay. It was, you know, up at the local church, uh, you know, was having a hard time, you know, getting my foot in the door, so to speak, to, you know, even get an ear for these people to hear the words that I was saying until I actually started healing them. Mm -hmm. Until I would, you know, address their, you know, little minor wounds or whatever, sore foot or whatever. And when they felt that healing power, now all of a sudden they want to listen. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, that. I guess that goes along with what we read earlier about the it's just a sign of the believer, mm -hmm. you know, so they see that power and they know where it's coming from. Right. And so that's what it's saying here. It's saying before we can become their teacher, we have to become their doctor. Mm -hmm. And no, this is this is why I wanted to bring this part out. There's many verses on this, but I wanted to bring this one out because of the crown of life. You're going to have to be their doctor first. You can't come in teaching them first. Right. Because once you heal a person that's genuinely sick. Now they're open to receive the words that yeah. you have to say. Yeah, yeah. You didn't already done something. You're making them feel better. It's like giving somebody some food. They got this illness of a hungry belly. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you didn't cure that illness. Right. Now they'll listen to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Seek first the wounds, the sores, and the sicknesses, and cure their ills so that you then may reach their spirits. All right. Wow. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, this is this is... You know, telling us, you know, we, we got the command earlier and this is our father telling us the order in which to, come, to put this because there's a lot of people out there that want to be our teacher. There's okay. a lot of people out there that want to teach and, you know, there's a lot of people got a, a lot of good stuff to say, you know, but, you know, not many of us are getting heard. Yeah. And, you know, there's so many sick people in the churches yeah, that yeah. need to be healed. And now, once I'm healed, now I'm able to sit and receive the other stuff that you have to say. Yeah, exactly. I believe that's and that's, I believe that's what he's telling us to hear that he, the reason why he did it like this. Let's look at verse 108. Go to your brothers like Jesus in the second era, bringing before my word the healing balsam. And what is the balsam? Okay, so now here he is about to give us details on you know what it is, and we can almost guess. Mm -hmm. Right, but no, but notice he's this part where he says, "Go like he did, like the Messiah did." Mm -hmm. Was he carrying a sack of healing stuff? Nope. Did he have herbal teas or whatnot? Nope. Nope. Oh, disciples, is it the water of fountains blessed and made medicine for the sick? Now, this is why it's important to read the scripture because when you're listening to the audio version, it sounds different. It sounds like it's saying it is. If you, if somebody wanted to, they could cut that part out and they could say, "Oh, disciples, it is." Instead of saying, "Is it?" Okay. It sounds like the man is saying, "It is the water of the fountains, blessed, blah blah blah." Mm -hmm. But it's not. He's asking a question: Is this what this is? Right. Talking about this holy water, you know, right. they'll sprinkle on you or whatever. Is that is that the healing balm that he's talking about? Mm -hmm. No, people. The balsam of which I speak is in your hearts. I deposit it there as a precious essence. And only love can open it to rush out like a torrent. So here is uh, here is the key to healing. Love. Love. Love is the key, is the absolute key to our to to any any to us mere humans only believers being able to go out here and heal these people. We to, in order to do so, we just have to learn 
how to transfer this love. Because, because if love is our healer and you don't, you aren't, you aren't able to use that love, then you must, you might as well go to the other thing, and that's just going to the doctor. Going to the doctor, and because that's why they ain't got no love for you. They ain't got no love for you, and you, you ain't, you, you, you don't really expect love. You know, you don't. Some people do. From the doctor. Yeah, my mom loves her doctor. Well, she used to. <laughs> she loved her doctor, and you know, it's doctor, doctor him this, doctor him that, doctor him that, and Doctor Doug. Yeah, and I'm like. Well, that man don't care nothing about you. No, no. If he no. actually cared about you, he would, you know, tell you that, no, this medicine that I'm giving you is actually, you know, is not going to cure you. If he wanted to it's help you. It's just maintaining you. He'd be talking to Dr. Zebby. Yeah, he'd be talking to, and then he'd be giving you some herbs, and he'd be praying over you. He, he ain't thinking about you. Well, so, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, to learn how to pray, so, you Yeah, know. the doctor's. They, you know, and I can't speak for every doctor, and I, I shouldn't say that, but most of them, you're just a client to them. Well, so. you, you think about it, they made this oath to these pagan gods, How, and, and what you're talking about is not of pagan gods. What you're talking about is of our father. Love is generated from him. He yeah. is love. Yeah. So now how, when these people have committed to these pagan gods, or now, they, they, now they're going to use the principles taught by our father. Right. That, don't, that don't make sense. So if we have some doctors in the um, listening, you know. Learn how to pray. Learn how to love, heal people. Yeah, we would love to hear your comments yeah. about not only the oath, but about, you know, is it true? You know, you don't have to necessarily say your name or whatever, but is it true that <laughs> the patients are just clients for you? I mm. would be interested in or knowing what they if you got a doctor, that. do you feel like you're just a client? Do you feel like your doctor loves you? Yeah. All right. When you wish to pour it out over some sick person, it will not be your hands that anoint them, but the spirit, inundated with love, charity, and consolation. So now is this a contradiction? Because I believe over here in the book of James, what did it tell us to do? Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So it didn't necessarily say put the hands on him. No, no. And like we said before, when you... Put the hands on. Do, does it say anywhere about putting your hands on? Um, or did we just think it does? No, I think we, we. I'll have to do some research on that because I, I, we may just think it does. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I would be pretty sure if I was to answer the only question on the test, I would say, yeah. Yeah. We're all too. supposed to lay hands on that. Yeah. yeah it's I think it does say lay, laying hands on them somewhere. But I believe that laying hands is just for encouragement and consolation for them. Because it's not the hands that's actually healing. No, it's not. And there, where you direct your thoughts, the prodigy will be worked. So this is what we were saying earlier, where you focus that love to that area. You're mm -hmm. actually thinking about that area. Mm -hmm. And I believe this may be one of the reasons why the hands are important, because now, you, you since you're touching that area, it's much easier to focus your attention on that area. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I'm, if I got my hand on your head, uh, it's hard to focus on something else besides your head. Yeah, just putting your hands on people. And, you know, I know that's not the the correct thing to do nowadays with, you know, people saying you touching them or yeah, else people are saying, like, well, I don't want to get germs or stuff like that. But it just makes you feel like that person cares. Yeah. It makes you feel like, you know, they want to 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 heal you or you love them or you just have some feelings for for them instead of that's just like a having a handshake opposed to a you know a, fit, a elbow bump or something like that yeah all right let's go on 110 you will be able to work in many ways upon the beings and elements of nature to bring consolation to all i tell you also do not fear illnesses and be patient and merciful with all. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Right. So it's like right on time verse when he said, "Don't be worried about getting sick from these people." Right. You know, if you can, if you, you do, you really believe that your father is going to allow you to get sick, healing somebody else? Right. Yeah, he is. But don't worry about it. <laughs> I did. I got sick. I got COVID mm. by help of your grandpa. Mm. But I'm kind of glad I did because you know I came through it. I ain't scared of COVID no more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Me and Covert, you know, we, we 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 got mutual respect for each other, I believe. Right. Only because of, you know. Anyway, let's go on. Mm -hmm. I got mutual respect for him. I don't know if he got respect for me, but let's go. On. With regard to the possessed and those confused in their human minds, you may also cure. 
For you have that faculty as well and must put it at the service of those beings that have fallen into desperation and oblivion. So here he's talking about the demon possessed. He's talking about the mentally insane. He's talking about people with, with not only physical ailments or emotional ailments or spiritual ailments, but these people have mental ailments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and he says that he did this for a very, a very special purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, does it say it there? No, it's, it's saying those beings that have fallen in desperation and oblivion. Um, it goes on to tell us, you know, how these type of healings are more special than the other type. Okay. Let's, let's go on. Free them and manifest this power before the incredi incredulous. 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 So this is what we were talking about. The people who are hard to believe. The, and the incredulous, the, the, these people, they have, they have a hard time believing in stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're actually going to heal these mentally ill or demon-possessed people mm -hmm. in front of them just so you believe. Right. And a lot of times these are going to be people that you know. Mm -hmm. You know, you like the Messiah, you've been watching this person, you know, with this mental illness all their life. And now all of a sudden they, they changed and they're different. Right. You know, it's hard to deny when you got to now live with this person. Mm -hmm. All right. It is one of the great missions of this people. Carry light where there is darkness. Break the chains of slavery and injustice and prepare this world to behold the Lord and see themselves, their inner selves with full knowledge of the truth. Yeah. So, you know, he's using this healing as a tool. Talking about our father. Right. You know, well, you know, it's his, right? He do what he want, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to jump down to chapter 54 and we're going to look at verse 43. Then the Ombo shall rise up, sheeting themselves in valor to testify to the truth of the evidence they have received. Okay, now this right here is talking about the envoys again. These are the ones, these, these are the individuals that are being humbled right now. You know, and they, they will be until this so-called day of the Lord when their true power is going to come out. When they're going to be recognized for who they are. And it's through this healing that they're going to, they're going to do so, right? It's, a, it's talking about the timing here. Those who having been deprived of hope by science shall recover their health spiritually. So here we are talking about again those who, you know, like they have been dependent on the doctors for healing. Mm -hmm. Talking about people, diabetes and cancer and, you know, mm -hmm. man really hasn't came up with a, a cure for, you know, any major disease except maybe polio. Yeah, tuberculosis. Yeah, mm -hmm. those ones that, you know cause too much harm to you to, to actually live with it but you know those that you ailments that you can actually live with for, with a long time like cancer you know a lot of times they'll let you live with it mm -hmm. even though there are cures for cancer they're available growing out there on in the weeds yeah mm -hmm. and testify of the miraculous cases that reveal a power that is infinite and of absolute wisdom. And never, never mind, you know, the the clover or whatever out there. You know, you you don't have to rely on red clover to get cancer. You can actually be healed through love. Yeah. It's just a matter of coming in contact with one of these individuals that has this 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 belief, this power. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and they're going to transfer it over to these other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's look at. Let's jump over here. Jumping around still. We're going to look at verse eight. Out of chapter 43. You ask that I heal you. And truly I say there is no one better than you yourselves to be your own doctor. So here we are back to ourselves. Yeah. You no, know, he's talking about, you know, us being healed. We all have ailments. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I have things I want to be healed of. And he's talking about, you know, us healing ourselves. Earlier he says if we still have these ailments, it's probably for a trial. Mm -hmm. But now he's actually talking about, this section is called heal through your own strength. Right. So this is about healing ourselves. What good would it do you if I healed you and removed your sufferings, if you do not withdraw from your errors, sins, vices, and imperfections? So this is the reason why we don't get healing. Right. You know, it's, we still have the thing. We're still doing the thing that's causing this, these, this, this, these illnesses. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it may not be a direct relationship. That's the problem. A lot of time, we're doing this thing over here that's mutually exclusive from what's making us sick. Right. You know, I ain't doing nothing that's, you know, causing me to be sick. And so we're not, we don't make the connection. Yeah, a lot of times we don't think, well, none of the times before we got this third testament, would you have ever thought that 
you were, you know, because you had a few illnesses when we um, lived mm, yeah. in the city. Yeah. Would, you have, would you have thought that your illnesses had anything to do with sin? No, never. And, you know, and because, you know, we're taught that. We're taught that, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with illnesses and sin or unrelated. But turns out, like you said, the Third Testament, we're learning that they are related. They're di directly related. Even though we read, and the Messiah always said, after he healed someone, Sin no I remember, more. go and sin no go more. And sin but we no never more. put those two and two together. Our pastors, our teachers, our leaders never told us that they had a connection. But, you know, thank the Father for the Third Testament that he puts those connections together for us. Yes, he does. It is not pain that is the origin of your ills, but your sins. It's, it's just, it, and you know, that they, they laugh at us when we talk about it like this, but this is this is where sin comes from. They laugh this at it where, because we don't want to hear that. Where, um, we don't want to. Pains come from. We don't want to stop doing what we're doing, but yet and still, we don't want to be sick. Well, that's what the doctors are for. Right. Now we have the ability right, to right. sin and do whatever we want. And when we feel bad, we can go to the doctor and he can make us feel better. Right. Even if he just puts gives us a pill that makes us go to sleep, we, we still feel better. Yeah. And you know? we can get up the next day feeling better and go back to doing exactly Go back to doing the same do. thing, you know. That's 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 yeah, like I say it again, that's what the doctors are there for. So we can live this lifestyle of sin and not have to do so much suffering. Hmm. You know, he got pain, right. he got some powerful medicine down there, that doctor do. Yeah, you got some good stuff down there, I bet. <laughs> Behold, they're the origin of suffering. The origins of suffering. Fight against sin, withdraw it from you, and you will be healthy. But it is for you to do. I only teach and help you. So now, now it's on us, you know what I'm yep. saying? All right, verse 10. When through your conscience you discover the origin of your afflictions and establish the means to combat it, you will feel the divine strength in abundance helping you to triumph in the battle and win your spiritual freedom. Talking about discovering what these sins are. Discovering mm -hmm. what it is that's making us sick in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's just saying that the Father will help you. He's not just going to leave you out there to do it by yourself. He's right there along with you because he's rooting for us. Yeah. And he wants us to... He, he wants us to get it right. He is our Father, and you know, you, you can't expect your Father to help you to to want you to want the best for you he he yes. is you know he's better than our daddies mm -hmm. all right let's see about it verse 11 how great will be your satisfaction and feeling that through your new marriage through your own marriage you are able to liberate yourself from pain and also win peace then so, you will say yeah, so oh, <laughs> so yeah now now you're realizing that you or were sick, not because you were unlucky, but because you were making errors. And so now you've discovered this scripture and you've used it to clean away your errors. And now you are regaining your health. Mm -hmm. Merit stuff that you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, stuff that you've done. Then you will say, oh, my Lord, your word was my bosom. Your doctrine has been my salvation. And that's what this third test, that's what all of the scripture is for. You know, it, it it explains sin to us and then allows us to remove these things that now we can become healthy individuals again. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's going to wrap it up for this class. That's a very enlightening class. You know, I know we wouldn't have been able to um, learn, teach um, and help others to understand healing if it wasn't for the Third Testament. So, you know, I know there's still some people out there who still doubt the Third Testament. But there's a lot of uh, information mm -hmm. or a lot of teachings mm -hmm. in there that we just wouldn't be have been able to pull out of the other books yeah. if it wasn't for that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to praise the Lord for His Word. All right. How do you think all you did on keeping us timely? Mm, I don't know. I have to let the people say in the comments. Some might say we tried to move too fast, and others say we probably started rambling a bit. I bet most of them say it was just right length. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you guys for the comments, and we thank you for all the support that you're giving our channel. Right. And we appreciate you watching our video. If you got anything out of it, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the dislike button if you didn't, but leave us a comment. Subscribe to our channel and pray for us. Shalom. Shalom.